Hello, my name is Philippe Ampli. I'm Vice Rector of the Université Libre de Bruxelles, ULB, and I'm very pleased to present you our paper, New Participative Space for MOOCs. The question we wish to address in this communication is, despite all the material and human resources invested by major academic institutions, why do MOOC-type courses not bring generally speaking, any great educational added value with respect to other online courses? And why do they fail bringing a significant innovation to learning? The underlying message of this communication is that the alleged techno-educational innovation in most MOOCs is rarely more than a manifestation of some divergent interest of the MOOC stakeholders and that a global commitment of these stakeholders to teaching and learning is not a general observation. In the second step, our objective is to present the institutional approach developed by the Université Libre de Bruxelles, ULB, in its MOOC initiative, which intends to shift the center of gravity of the participative MOOC production model towards the expected issues of any course, it is teaching, and learning. Why do MOOCs fail bringing an actual innovation to learning? First, because MOOCs are losing their original characteristics. From a sociological perspective, MOOCs form a technocentric participative space linking the often the diverging interests of their multiple stakeholders. It is principally, but not only, higher education institutions, teachers and learners. Firstly, universities wish to improve their visibility, boost their reputation through the use of such courses and even attempt to attract new top performing takers for their on-campus courses as well as new learners for their online programs. Secondly, teaching staffs invest effort, often without financial rewards, with the hope of gaining added value for their own research and sometimes their teaching activities. Thirdly, on-campus students take up such online course as an innovative way of learning, often in combination with a flipped classroom, while off-campus students can pride themselves on belonging, at least virtually, to some top universities or on continuing their long life learning. Fourthly, university techno-pedagogical support departments view MOOCs as reinvigorating their work, up to now dominated by providing technical support to teaching staff with regard to online learning platforms. Fifthly, politicians pounce on MOOCs as a way of enhancing what they are doing in the field of higher education, as seen in France, where the Ministry of National Education is investing heavily in France Université Numérique Fun, its new university IT platform. Sixthly, hosting platforms as well as e-learning content providers can see signs of the establishment of a new market. And finally, the media are making it a hot topic, coming up with a plethora of articles and reports on the subject. At the end of the day, all these divergent interests find themselves prosper comfortably within the current MOOCs. Are MOOCs still massive? Present MOOCs face massive participation dropout. Although these courses claim to be massive, often with tens of thousands of enrolled students, the facts demonstrate that 50% of the learners drop out after the first week 10% actually end up taking all modules and only 4% finally gain a qualification. Are they still open? Openness is more and more an illusion. The open nature of these courses and the fact that they are free of charge tend to be highlighted in the media and by the MOOCs developers. However, these two characteristics sometimes collide with the legal reality of the Internet. Indeed, in many cases, there is a formal ban on using, modifying or disseminating MOOC educational content, 
which is so, to some extent contradictory to the concept of open educational resource. Moreover, monetization systems are beginning to appear. These courses are dependent on a business model to guarantee their continuing existence. Though these courses are online, enabling anyone to follow them at any time, the requirement to have a stable, high-speed internet connection may present an obstacle to the plans of the top universities to offer courses worldwide to a diversified audience, in many cases in developing countries. What about course? Pedagogical principles are often forgotten. In many cases, MOOCs are limited to the transmission of audiovisual contents, some online activities and few discussion tools. MOOCs thus merely use the setup and layout from most lectures and memory-oriented quizzes. We can generally observe in most MOOCs an absence of pedagogical scenarios and tutors, assignments hardly matching content, assessments without individual feedback, and so on. As for in interactions with a teacher, these are relatively rare, covering a bit more than hundreds teachers who had designed a MOOC. The survey conducted by Kolovich demonstrated that interaction with students was, on average, limited to one single comment posted in the course from once a week. Why is the ULB institutional approach adequate for MOOC design? Because the ULB design of MOOC is action research driven. The production of MOOCs at the Université Libre de Bruxelles is based on two complementary research-based methods, the design-based research and the agile method. The former combines the development of a system, in our case a MOOC, and analysis of its impact with a view to interactively improve the system through feedback based on this analysis. The aim of design-based research is to manage a practical problem through having researchers and practitioners working together and developing with iterative cycles and successive improvements optimal solutions. The second method, Agile, is an interactive, incremental and collaborative method with just the right dose of formalism and generating a high-quality product while taking into account developing needs. Second, research-based MOOC design is a natural approach for universities. Besides teaching, scientific research is the second main mission of universities, and the permanent interaction between both missions feeds the constant evolution of university courses, content, and design. So that it sounds really natural for a higher education institution like ULB to build its strategy for MOOC design on the basis of quantitative as well as qualitative observations and scientific evidences collected from ULB own experience and from comparable MOOC activities. MOOC design is considered as a research project in itself and benefits from our tradition of scientific approach. Second, research-based MOOC storyboarding delivers MOOC scenario adapted to the users. Looking at the pedagogical support for the MOOC designers, the approach used at ULB concentrates on supporting the pedagogical time through both design and the production process and in particular intensively before the recording. This support ranges from the initial interview with the teacher to discuss the ins and outs of adapting a course to MOOC format to the production of the educational documents via the scene setting in the form of a storyboard, an analysis of target student's behavior with a view to improving the product and possibly, and not firstly, even with the in-depth technical aspects. Pedagogical investment and learning analytics help to prevent dropout and to improve tools. Learning analytics produced during the MOOC give somehow access to the collation between the MOOC production process and their adoption by the learners. This allows for feedback and constitutes a reflection basis for researchers, designers and techno-educational teams ultimately leading to 
the improvement of future MOOCs. On the other hand, qualitative surveys at the end of the MOOCs, like interviews, anthropological analysis of behaviors, logbooks, complete the collection of indicators available to the teaching staff and the production staff for improving the content and objectives of the MOOC with respect to the learner demand. This constitutes the best track to prevent massive dropout before the end of the MOOC diffusion. In conclusion, ULB proposes to revisit MOOCs in an educational perspective. As far as MOOCs are concerned, Mathieu Cizel stated recently that the phenomenon is still in its prehistory. Technologies employed are still rustic and scientific knowledge is just beginning to take shape. In our view, this is incorrect. We consider the massive open online courses as a new avatar of distance learning and the product of 20 years of research which have provided a better understanding of teaching and learning practices. To conclude, the goal of the ULB's deployment of MOOCs is to systematically enrich its MOOCs with the technical and educational elements that are too often missing, helping them to become real learning tools, promoting success and emancipation, looking beyond current MOOC production, in many cases done without much thought, in haste, without support and technocentric, other paths are possible. Thank you for your attention.